Good morning, all people. Welcome to our Sunday morning virtual worship experience. Thanks for joining us on today. Make sure you like, comment, and share this broadcast with your family and friends. Join us on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. for Fire the Word Virtual Bible Study with Pastor Walter Hall and Minister Chantel Cross right here on Facebook Live. Orange Sunday will be on November the 28th at 9.30 a.m. Our theme is God Remembers His Covenant Promises to Us. All people, it's that time again. Join Bishop Sharon Jones for the Isha Conference 2022, Becoming My Best Self, on Friday, January the 14th through Sunday, January the 16th. Mark your calendars and save the date. Join us at 5.30 a.m. for It's Another Time to Pray every morning on the prayer line at 302-202-1104. Access code 945175. Call on all seniors, join us every Sunday evening at 5 p.m. for our senior prayer call. Everyone is welcome to join in. Our next food giveaway will be on Tuesday, November the 23rd at 11 a.m. Join Bishop Sharon Jones every Wednesday at noon for It's Another Time to Pray Noonday Edition via Facebook Live. Please go on to our ministry on this morning. There are three ways to do so. The first way to give is through our website, www.allpeopleint.org. Click on the Giving tab and give. The second way to give is through Givelify. Type in All People International Church. Our zip code is 32208. You'll see a picture of our leadership, Apostle Alvin T. Jones Sr. and Bishop Sharon Jones. The third way to give is via Cash App. Our Cash App handle is dollar sign A-P-I-C-J-A-X. Let's give honor to our leaders, Chief Apostle Alvin T. Jones Sr. and Bishop Sharon Jones. We thank you and honor you both, and we appreciate all you do in ministry. We love you. Pastor Ardell Jones and Pastor Walter Hall, thank you both for all you do in ministry. We love you. Get ready. Our Sunday morning virtual worship experience starts now. Thank you for waking me up this morning. 
Thank you for putting clothes on my back. Thank you for watching over me as I slept and slumber. God, I thank you for watching over me on the highways and byways. Is there anybody that's grateful on today? Hallelujah. We celebrate Thanksgiving this coming week. And I am forever grateful and thankful to serve an amazing God. Today we set our minds and kingdoms set on things above where Christ is. We set our love on God the Father, His Son, Jesus Christ, and His Holy Spirit. We make Jesus Christ the center of everything that we do. We honor the Holy Spirit and we His presence, His power, and His will in all things. We make the following declaration in the name of Jesus. We declare that the name of Jesus and his name alone will be glorified in this house. We declare the glory of the Lord will fill this house. We seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. We declare miracles, signs, and wonders shall follow the preaching of the word. We declare that this is our season. Can you declare that for yourself on today? I declare that this is my season. We declare in this house our Father and pours out His Spirit upon all flesh. Our sons and daughters shall prophesy. Our old men and women shall dream dreams. And our young men and women shall see visions. We declare as the Word of God goes forth. His Word takes root in good soil. Every son and every daughter of this house will put his or her hand to the plow according to each one's gifts and calling. We declare that we dwell in unity in this house with our brothers and sisters in Christ. And God commands a blessing in this house. We speak to every spirit causing disunity and we say be removed and cast into the sea in Jesus' name. We declare that this house shall be called a house of prayer. We declare that this house shall be called a house of healing. We declare that this house shall be called a house of deliverance because we are the called of God. We are God's anointed. We are saved. We are sanctified. And we are full of the Holy Ghost. We are the lender and not the power. We are the head and not the tail. We are always above and never beneath. Our house is blessed. Our seed is blessed. And every single day you will change to my name. Is blessed because I am a child of the king. And if you don't get excited about what I just read, just think back to what God has already done in your life. And you should lift up the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody bless that wonderful name on this morning. Hey, yeah, hey. Oh, speak to my heart. Oh, 
worship your name, God. There's nobody like you in all the earth. We exalt you. We lift you above every obstacle. We will not be distracted by the illusions of the enemy. But we will keep looking to you for direction. Because there's nobody greater. Nobody greater. There's nobody greater than you. We searched all over. Nobody who can mend our hearts. Yes. No one who can touch our minds. Thank you, Lord. And I believe that God is rearranging some things in our lives. So as we charge this atmosphere with our praise and our worship yes. on this morning, let us keep in the front of our mind that he inhabits the praises of his people. Yes. So that means he lives in our praise. Thank you, Lord. He dwells in our worship. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I bless you, Lord. Bless you, God. Hallelujah. Hey. Come on, can you clap a little bit? Come on, can you clap a little bit all over the sanctuary? Because God is great and great and to be praised. Yeah. We give your name glory. We give your name honor. We give your name praise. I want to be ready for you when you say.
I'm coming in. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta. Because you've been so good. See how great, how great is our God. Help me sing right there. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. That's what my grandmama would say. How great thou art. Hallelujah. How great thou art. Come on, some old person say, then sings my soul, the hymns of the church. My Savior God to thee. God is a mighty God. Would you make some noise in this place and put your hands together? Mighty are the works your hand right there live in your home, in your living room, still laying in your bed. Give God a praise. Brandon, Brandon, go back to that hymn. Go back to that hymn. You know I'm old school. This is your name. This is my story. Go back to the hymn. This is my the hymn. 
How great thou art. How great thou art. Hallelujah. How great thou art. Yeah, yeah. This, this is my, my score. church they would slow that way down and they would say this is my song so my, my Savior, Savior God, God to, to thee, thee. Yeah. how great how great thou art oh, oh. there we go oh, oh. how Son, to the going down of the same he's God. Hallelujah. We magnify you. We glorify you. How excellent is thy name in all the earth. He's a great God. Do me a favor, turn to a neighbor and tell that neighbor he's a great God. Right there in Facebook, drive those comments crazy and tell the world he is a great God. Come on, put those hands together as you take your seats. He's a wonderful God. Give it on to Christ, who's the head of my life. I stand before you saved and sanctified and filled with heaven's best, which is the Holy Ghost. And not just any type of Holy Ghost, but the, like the old saints used to say, with a mighty burning fire. Walk right fire, talk right fire, live right fire type of fire that makes me want to see God. And I just don't want to see him, beloved. I want to see God in peace. I want God to say, well done. Thy good and thy faithful servant. Well done. Well done. He may not say I did it right all the time. Make some mistakes in my life. Can I get a witness right there? Uh, but I want to make sure I get those things straight. 
lift your hands if you just want to get those things straight. Because I want God to say, well done. Do me a favor and jump to your feet and put those hands together for the angel of this house. Our chief apostle, Bishop A.T. Jones, make some noise for Bishop Jones right now. We love you. Drive those comments crazy. Say, hey, Bishop. Hey, chief, chief apostle. Now make some noise for Bishop Sharon Jones. Listen, beloved, almost 50 years of entire and in dedicated, integral service that they've given to this, to this city and to this congregation. We thank God so much for them. Amen. God is good. It's been a long week. Been a long weekend. Thank you all so much who all came and shared out in the home going service for uh, Master Sean Patrick Taylor II. Uh, we had a good time yesterday in, in just worshiping God and praising God that he's no longer in that wheelchair. He's running down streets of gold. He's swimming in that crystal river. Uh, for 23 years, he was plagued with the bondage, but God has set him free. And can I tell you something, beloved, there's some things that God would not free you from on this side, but he would definitely free you from on the other. Can I get a witness right there? Thank God. we had, So we, we had a long weekend, so I, I don't prepare to be before you that long at all. Uh, pastor is tired, and, and I know y'all tired, and, and I'm, I'm, I just woke up, but I think I'm hungry too. We'll see. I think I want some dinner. <laughs> I think I want some dinner, too. I haven't really decided yet. And I think I want some dinner. So we won't be long. All week, read and wrote and read and wrote and read and wrote and deleted and read and wrote some more and deleted and read and wrote some more and deleted and read and wrote some more and deleted. And I told Elder E, Elder Everett, I said, everything I have keeps coming back to this one verse. Uh, this week, beloved, uh, on this Thursday, as a collective community of Americans, uh, some citizens and some non-citizens alike, uh, we share in our once a year thanks unto God. Once a year, we get together as a collective nation on one day and we tell God thanks. <laughs> one day. Out of 365 days that God has allowed us to wake up, that God has allowed us to breathe, that God has healed us, delivered us, set, re set us free. As a collective community, we give him one day. My question to you, beloved, is what do you do in the other 364 days? Beloved, the mark of a cultured person is measured by, in society, by what society calls etiquette. Uh, we are characterized as either polite or impolite, uh, rude or refined by our ability to use proper etiquette. Uh, etiquette says there are certain responses to certain situations. If you ask a favor, uh, it is anticipated that you will follow that favor up with the word, please. If you make a mistake, you indicate your error by saying, my apology. If you interrupt others in their conversation, our communications, our activities, it is expected for you to say, Excuse me. And if someone does something for you in response to his or her kindness, you ought to say thank you. Yeah, this is a lesson in etiquette. I bring this to your attention, beloved, because today, because we are living in a selfish world. We are living in a world that has lost nearly all sense of order. Uh, people will run over you and never look back and say, excuse me. 
Folk will hurt you in ways that seem unimaginable. And they will never apologize. They will ask the world of you and expect you to give to them without ever saying the words, please. There are those who will take everything and anything for granted and not once say thank you. And beloved, all these breaches of etiquette, of all the bad manners, I, I, I don't know one that cups, cuts more deeply than the inability for folk to say thank you. Story goes, pastor says he was in Brazil. Says he was in Brazil and he was preparing to go teach a class. Walking down the street, he says as he walks down the streets every day, he's approached by beggars. He says it's so many children that's begging, it's really impossible for him to care for all of them. So the one particular day, he, he little boy pulled his coat. Said when the little boy pulled his coat, he looked at the boy and saw the pity in his eyes and saw the hurt in his eyes. And his, the little boy asked him, can you just give me food? Said he was moved to compassion and he took this little boy, beloved, into the local coffee shop. Said he brought his normal coffee for the day and then he told the, the worker to give this little boy whatever pastry he desired says that he expected, like any other day, that when he does something for these little children, they grab the pastry and run out. He said, but, but he never turned around to look back at the counter because he expected the boy to be gone. He said he sat at his table sipping his coffee when he realized someone was standing behind him. Say he turned around and this little boy with a, his hand full of pastries looks at him and says, sir, thank you very much. He said at that time his heart was moved so much that he didn't just want to buy one pastry, but he wanted to buy the entire store. Only because he said, thank you. Our text this morning, beloved, is drawn from what I feel is one of David's greatest writings. If you go through the book of Psalms, the book of Psalms with an S, because you're talking about multiple Psalms, when you're dealing with one song, it is just song, no S, that's a little, little lesson there. When you talk about the book of Psalms, uh, most of the book of Psalms are written uh, to the nation of Israel. Uh, but when you deal with this particular song, uh, Paul, David is not dealing with the nation of Israel, for he's dealing with the world as a whole. Uh, it makes it very strange because all the songs, most of them, about 95% of the songs are written to the nation of Israel. But when David writes this song, he begins to think about what God has done for everybody. And he starts off this song in a very peculiar way. He starts off this song with a command. For David says in Psalms 107 and 1, he says, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. Beloved, when David put that O, that, that, that letter O in front of this song, uh, that O indicates that this is now a commandment. Uh, he is not asking uh, the world to give thanks. Uh, he is not uh, suggesting uh, that the world give thanks. David is commanding uh, that the world give thanks. He says, O, oh, give thanks. Then, beloved, he does not just leave it to your imagination for why you should give God thanks. He says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. 
Uh, yeah, yeah, in, yeah. In times past, David is, is, is talking to Israel in 106. He tells Israel in 106 to give thanks to the Lord. But in 107, he, he tells the whole world, he says, you need to give thanks unto the Lord. But I don't want you to even, to even have to guess why you are thanking him. You need to thank him because he's good. Um, I'm almost about to close, but I want to ask anybody up in here today, uh, right there live on Facebook, has God ever been good to you? Oh, has he ever been good? Has God ever made ways out of no ways? Has he ever healed your body? Has he ever opened up closed doors? ever been a bridge over troubled water? Has he ever been a tunnel through a mountain? Has he ever been as far as shield to you when the enemy is coming? Has he ever been good? Now, truth, beloved, the truth of the matter is that the goodness of God is different in all situations. Uh, if, if the only thing you've ever had is a common cold and, and then, then the goodness that, that Elder Parker has of God is different than your goodness because her goodness says when the enemy stood upon me to eat of my flesh it stumbled and it fell baby your, your goodness is not a cancer testimony but if he woke you up this morning he's still been good He says, I'm not asking you to tell him thank you. I'm not suggesting you, suggesting to you that you tell him thank you. David says, I am commanding you to tell him thank you because when you look back over your life and you begin to think things over, David says, I'm pretty sure that you can look at a certain situation in your life and say, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my ground, anybody up in here that has a testimony, if it had not been oh, for the Lord. Oh, I can look up over my life and think about times where, where I didn't know what to do. And, and right in the nick of time, I, God showed up. And it's something about God. He just don't show up. But when God shows up, he shows out. Have anybody up in here that God ever showed out in the hospital room? God ever showed out in the courtroom? God ever showed out in your finances? He ever showed out in the life of your children? When he shows up. So David says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. Uh, for his mercy endureth forever. He says, oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy endureth forever. Now, 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 I, I, I need to kind of break this down. I need you to understand this. I, uh, the interpreter, the interpreter did not give you the full encompass of the scripture when he interpreted this. He, he interpreted the best way into English that he could. But when he said, for his mercy endureth forever, uh, what, what he was saying is that for the rest of your life, you will have mercy. Uh, he's, what he's saying is that, that, that God's mercy, it, it won't end for you. But, but the original text, help me, Lord, the, the original text, beloved, no, doesn't just say his mercy endures forever. He, the original text says mercy is ever. Oh. The original text says mercy is ever. It does not say that his mercy endures forever. It says that his mercy is ever. What that means is his mercy has no end because his mercy never had a beginning. He, the original writer said that his mercy never is because his mercy never begins. It says that God is just merciful. It doesn't matter what you do. God just has to have anybody up in here that when you think about your life and when God should have took you out, thank God that his mercy is just who he is. He just has mercy. 
mercy is one of God's characteristics. Just like God is love, God is mercy. So no matter what you're going through, he'll always have mercy. No matter when you fall short, he'll always reach way down and lift you up. No matter what you do, he'll love you through your mess because he always... says that his mercy endures forever. Ever is his mercy. When I wake up in the morning, his mercy is there. When I walk around during the day, his mercy is there. When I go to work, his mercy is there. When I drive my car, his mercy is there. When an accident should have killed me, his mercy was there. When I go to the doctor and he gives me a bad report, God's mercy is there. No matter what hell goes on in my life, his mercy is ever. Hey. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good, for his mercy is ever. His mercy has no end because his mercy never had a beginning. When God came into, his mercy came into. When God came into, his love came into. So David said, when he thought about this, in verse number two, he said, so let the redeemed of the Lord Say so. <laughs> I'm closing. He says, so let the redeemed of the Lord say so. David said, I'm tired of the people that God has brought out just thinking about what he did. He says, if God has ever delivered you, then you need to say something about it. If God has ever brought you out, it's time for you to tell somebody else. He said, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Can I ask a question up in here this morning? Do I have anybody that God has ever redeemed? He redeemed you from the hand of the enemy. He redeemed you from death. I don't know who I'm preaching to, but I got a sneaky suspicion that some of you, some of us should have been dead, sleeping in our grave. But one day, God redeemed me. I wasn't worthy. I shouldn't have got it. I was fit for death. I was fit for death. I wasn't ready to die, but I should have died. I wasn't ready to go, but I should have go. Do I have anybody when you look back over your life, you know of a situation where God should have took you out? Well, you ought to say so. You ought to scream and say, God, thank you. You've been so good. You've been so merciful. You've been so kind. You've been so long-suffering. God, you've been better to me than I've been to myself. You love me more than I love myself. You care for me more. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Open up your mouth and scream in this place. Show some sign that you have been redeemed. Oh, give thanks. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Let the redeem of the Lord say so, for whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Now David begins to tell people, what he did, he said, just in case you don't know what he did, he said, let me remind you what he did. He said, from whom he has redeemed from the hand of the enemy and gathered them out from the lands from the east and from the west and from the north and from the south. He said, you wandered around smoking drugs, 
on alcohol, loose listen, loose living, sleep with everybody. They wandered around into the wilderness in a solitary way. He said, you were so bad, you didn't even know you was bad. You running around in the wilderness in a solitary way. They found no city to dwell in. He said, hungry and thirsty, they so faded in them. Then one day, you woke up. One day, you woke up. You, you remember the story of, of the prodigal son? Uh, he done spent all his riches, and he's now in the pig pen. He's eating a slot with the pigs, and the Bible actually says something that's amazing. The Bible says he came to himself, and he started realizing that even a servant in his father's house eats better, uh, is doing better than he's doing right now. So he decided to go back to his father, not to get anything great, but can I just be a servant? Uh, he woke up. That's what the scripture says here. It says, it says, and it, it says, then they, he said, hunger and thirst, they so in them. Then they cried unto the Lord. Can I ask you a question? Who you been crying to? Maybe you've been crying to the wrong people. Maybe you've been crying to the wrong individuals. It says, then they cried unto the Lord in their what? In their trouble. In their trouble. Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of all their distress. And he led them forth by the right way that they may go into a city of habitation. He led them in the right way so they would go and prosper. He led them in the right way so they would go and have a better life. He led them in the right way so they would go and actually have something. This is what I've been getting to in verse 8. It seemed like everything just came to a head for David. And he said, oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men all. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. This just like verse 8, just like in verse 1, that O that old by itself and that OH here is not a suggestion, it's a commandment. David says, oh, that men will praise the Lord for his goodness. I want to know, has God been good to anybody up in here? If God God has been good, then that's a reason to give him praise. I didn't ask you. I didn't ask you if everything is going your way. I didn't ask you if all your bills have been paid. I didn't ask you if you're sick or if you heal. I didn't ask you if you're up or if you down. I just said you need to give God praise because regardless of where life finds you at, he's still been good. I don't care what the world gives you. You should have a testimony that he's still been good. I don't care how it looks in your life. You still Still should have a testimony that God is good. So regardless of how it looks, every day you wake up should be a day of thanksgiving. Every day you get out your bed should be a day of Lord, I praise you. Lord, I adore you. How excellent is the name with all the earth. Nobody like you. God, I can't have if I had 10,000 tongues. I couldn't praise you enough. Every day you wake up, I don't care. If you can't pay your bills, you need to lift your hand and say, God, thank you for another day. You woke me up to watch you work it out. Did you hear what I said? Your thanksgiving, your thanksgiving has to be God. Thank you for giving me another day to watch you work it out. God, I can't do it, but I already know somehow, some way, you will work it out in my favor now 
unto him that's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, more than you can ask. I think, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I thank you. We'll work things out in your favor. Thank you when I'm up. Thank you when I'm down. Thank you when I'm in. Thank you when I'm out. I know people asking you, why are you telling him thank you in the midst of your hell? Why I came to let somebody know today that hell won't last always. Sickness won't last always. Depression won't last always. Trouble won't last always. So now, before he even brings me out, before he even heals my body, before he even saves my children, I'm going to lift my hands and say, God, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you in the morning, thank you in the evening, thank you in the midnight, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Sick in my body. Thank you. Don't know what to do. Thank you. Don't know which way to turn. Thank you. The writer said, God, we don't know what to do. But our eyes are steadfast on you. So I'm going to count the three. And when I get the three, I want you to give God a praise. I didn't ask you if he's already did it. I want you to give him praise because you know one day he's going to do just what he said. Are you ready? One day he will heal your body. One day he will save your children. One day he will bring you over. One day he will. Are you ready? This is thankful Sunday. I'm going to count to three and I want you to drive those comments crazy and tell God thank you. I'm going to count to three and I want you to step out in the aisle and give God a crazy praise. Are you ready? One, two, three. Yeah. you free. Thank him until he pays your bills. Thank you until he saves your husband. Thank you until he delivers you. Thank you until you raise him up. Thank him until he raise you up. Thank him until he open doors. Thank you until he becomes a bridge over troubled waters. Thank him until he changes your life. You ought to give him praise. To, but the spirit just told me that a few of you are going through something that you never experienced before in your life. God told me to tell you all you need to do is put a dance on it, step out of the aisle and put a dance on what you need and God God, he will show up, and when God shows up, he will set you free, say yeah, dance, dance, dance. Yeah, right there in your home, I tell you 
you to stand up from your sofa. I dare you to get out that bed and right that in your bedroom, right that in your family room. I dare you to give God the best praise. I don't care what condition you're in right now. Give him praise through your condition. Give him praise through your sickness. Give him praise through your sight of madness. Praise him. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. Do me a favor and turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't know. Say, neighbor, I don't know what you've been going through. Say, neighbor, I don't know what's been keeping you up at night. Say, neighbor. I don't know what's been bringing tears to your eyes. But say, neighbor, if you been going through anything like I have been going through, say, neighbor, if you been going through anything like I been going through, say, neighbor, turn to your neighbor. And say, neighbor, the Bible says, we will, we shall rejoice together. Say so, neighbor, this next dance is not for me. This next dance is me praising God for what he's getting ready to do in your life. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him for your neighbor. Praise him until your neighbor get healed. Praise him until God bring your neighbor out. Praise him until he set your neighbor free. Praise him until he save your neighbor children. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Yeah. Yeah. Praise him. Praise him! I'm 
Hallelujah. 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 Lift those hands and just begin to worship him. He's a wonderful God. Just worship him. Lift your hands and just worship him. Tell him how wonderful he is. Tell him how much you love him. He's amazing, God. hands. Financial increase 
is so. The saving of your family is so. In Jesus' name. Amen. Beloved, put those hands together and give God the greatest praise that you have. Hallelujah. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. Beloved, I hope and pray something's been said and done today to be a source and strength and help to you in these days, months, and weeks to come. Know, beloved, that God is for you and he is not against you. You are the alpha of his eye and he protects you from danger seen and unseen. That's enough, beloved. But not just one day, but for 365 days to give him thanks. Thank you. It's time to give, beloved. It's time to give. Listen, beloved, right there in Facebook, get your offering, your seed, your tithe together. Listen, beloved, we pray that you are tithe payers, for God has given you 100% of the job. He only asks you to return back to him 10% of what he's giving you. And we are a witness in this house. If you give God that 10, he will allow you to do more with that 90 that you ever dreamed possible. Return that tithe. Give that free will offering this morning. Our chief apostle, our bishop, asked that everyone give an offering of at least $20. And then feel free to sow seed into fertile ground. But this is fertile ground. Three ways you can give. If you're on Facebook, it's right there on your screen. The first way, beloved. It's through our website. That website is www.allpeopleint.org. Click on give, follow directions there, and it'll direct you on how to give. Secondly, if you have a smartphone, I hope you've already downloaded the GiveLify app. Download the GiveLify app, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. In the search field, type in All People in National Church. Our zip code is 32208. You'll see our uh, church logo and a beautiful picture of our chief apostle Bishop Sharon you know you're in the right place give last but love it through that cash app all of us has that cash app that green icon our cash app handle is dollar sign A-P-I-C-J-A-X remember if you're here in the house we would prefer you to give electronically if you're in the house because of this pandemic but if you choose to give in person, that's fine, beloved. Of course, we're going to take it. As you're exiting the building today, right in the front of this church, you'll see two, two drop boxes. Drop that offering tie out there. I ask you exit out on both sides today. You'll see drop boxes. Please drop that offering tie a seat off in those boxes. It will be recorded for you accordingly. Can you do me a favor? If you in this house, stand to your feet and scream and holler and say, we love you, CA. We love you, Bishop Sherry. Come on, make some noise right there in Facebook. Drive those comments crazy and say, Chief Apostle CA, we love you, Bishop Sherry, we love you. I know they love you. And for myself and Lady Sharonda, we love you so much and we pray for you daily. We pray that God does everything you ask for and more to bless your life. Chief Apostle, you want to say something? You good, sir? They talking, they good there. All right, listen, it's time to get out of here. You want to say something? God bless you, saints. Listen, for, for our Facebook audience, thank you all for joining us today. We hope and pray that there's something been said or done to be a source of truth and have your life. Remember to join us back here this Wednesday at 6 p.m. This Wednesday, 6 p.m. Join us for Fire in the Word. It's going to bless your life. And next Sunday morning, 9.30 a.m., same bad time, same bad channel. We love you so much. I pray that the blessings of God will cover your life. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Join us on Wednesdays at 6 p.m. for Fire the Word Virtual Bible Study with Pastor Walter Hall and Minister Chantel Cross right here on Facebook Live. Orange Sunday will be on November the 28th at 9.30 a.m. Our theme is God remembers his covenant promises to us. 
All people, it's that time again. Join Bishop Sharon Jones for the Isha Conference 2022, Becoming My Best Self. On Friday, January the 14th through Sunday, January the 16th. Mark your calendars and save the date. Join us at 5.30 a.m. for It's Another Time to Pray every morning on the prayer line at 302-202-1104. Access code 945175. Call on all seniors. Join us every Sunday evening at 5 p.m. for our senior prayer call. Everyone is welcome to join in. Our next food giveaway will be on Tuesday, November the 23rd at 11 a.m. Join Bishop Sharon Jones every Wednesday at noon for It's Another Time to Pray Noonday Edition via Facebook Live. Please sign to our ministry on this morning. There are three ways to do so. The first way to give is through our website, www.allpeopleint.org. Click on the Giving tab and give. The second way to give is through Givelify. Type in All People International Church. Our zip code is 32208. You'll see a picture of our leader, Chief Apostle Albert T. Jones, Sr. and Bishop Sharon Jones. The third way to give is via Cash App. Our Cash App handle is dollar sign A-P-I-C-J-A-X. Let's give honor to our leaders, Chief Apostle Albert T. Jones, Sr. and Bishop Sharon Jones. We thank you and honor you both, and we appreciate all you do in ministry. We love you. Pastor Ardell Jones and Pastor Walter Hall, thank you both for all you do in ministry. We love you. All people, enjoy the rest of your weekend and have a safe and amazing week. We love you.